on this beautiful day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, on a personal note, um, I would like to thank you all for being so supportive this past year. It's so nice to be back. And I'm just grateful to our wonderful St. Andrew's family. We've been so um, supportive and loving to the, my family and um, our loved ones through the loss of my both of my parents last year. And we just really felt the love. And I just want to be so thankful to you all. Um, and this is a note from our own Betty Mill as well, full of thanks for our wonderful family. To my SAPC family, your flowers, cards, concern, and visits have meant so much to me as I recover from my surgery. Thank you to all. Sincerely, sincerely blessings to you all. Betty Mill. Thank you. Last Sunday was our Super Bowl Sunday, and we took a monetary donation and food collection. Thanks to your generosity, we donated $326.44, and 266 food items were collected to be distributed throughout the community. So that was a very good show. Um, we started our Lent Wednesday services at 12 o'clock. St. Andrews has the honor of hosting the services this year. We had a lovely um, service last week, and our church and other church, <coughs> Presbyterian churches in the area hosted lunch. This coming week, Frank Gasparini, who is a <coughs> minister at uh, Milden Presbyterian Church in Sharks, will be speaking. And we will also be hosting another lunch, uh, not our church, but other churches will come together in our fellowship hall uh, to have a light lunch. And there also is takeout available, too, if you're in a hurry. It's a really nice way to see other members of the community uh, that you really don't see very much um, that go to other churches. Let's see here. What else do we have? Oh. Um, St. Andrew's t-shirts and polo shirts are for sale. They're on order. They're, you can order them until March the 1st. That's the deadline. Uh, I believe it's $20 for t-shirts and $40 for polo shirts. It's just kind of nice to wear around the community, if you're, especially if you're doing work on behalf of the church. Thank you to Erica <coughs> Eubank for um, organizing this, and her information is in the bulletin if you need to reach out to her to wear a, a t-shirt or a polo shirt. Um, tomorrow, we will be out bright and early from 8 to 10 on a work day. We're just sprucing up the grounds, uh, cutting back some shrubs, doing some landscape work, and um, the more hands, the faster it goes. And it's, an again, another nice time to just kind of be with church family and friends throughout, <laughs> without, um, just during the week. Um, let's see. Uh, we will have coffee after the service today. I, I heard a little bird told me that we will be having our Chesapeake Donut Company donuts there today, so that's a little treat um, for today. I believe that is all of our announcements. That's kind of enough. Um, that's all we have.
Please join me in a call to worship. We have a wonderful God. Those of us who honor and trust Him can see all the blessings He has for us. Praise God for His great kindness. For the Lord answers our prayers. As we extinguish the first Lenten candle, we are reminded that we are all in sin. But God's gift of Christ has made us acceptable to God. And as a result, we can have eternal life. Even through sin, ruled through death, even, I'm sorry, even though sin ruled through death, God rules over all through Christ. Please stand and join us in the gathering hymn, number 101, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
Wednesday, and it was a great privilege to have the community join us here, where over a hundred and more people gathered together to celebrate this beginning day of Lent. Uh, it was a wonderful occasion for us to showcase the beautiful facility that we have, and also the hospitality that uh, is so rich, so vital to who we are as God's community. Uh, it was a wonderful time. It, it's kind of an interesting time because not only was it Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, it was also, as you remember, Valentine's Day, wasn't it? And it's kind of, it seems like that's a strange mixture of Lent and love going together. Uh, it, it, it caused me to remember uh, one of the, uh, when I was uh, in college, my, my sister on Valentine's Day sent me a card and uh, it, it said this, you crept into my heart, you crept into my life. Happy Valentine's Day, you big creep. <laughs> <laughs> and so I remember that, and uh, it's, it's a part of uh, this idea, this mixture of, uh, of feelings and thoughts. Uh, and we certainly uh, had a wonderful occasion. I want to share with you this morning uh, another important uh, word that comes to us. These are the words of the Apostle Paul. And as he's sharing them, he's sharing them to a church. He's sharing them to a church that has grown up surrounded by a Greek culture that has now been turned into a Roman city-state. And as a result, there are all kinds of other temples and different places to worship kinds of different things happening in the midst of all of those. And Paul wants to be very direct about the essence of Christianity. And so he shares these words for us uh, that are especially our thoughts for this beginning Sunday of Lent. Now I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas who is Peter and then to the twelve. Pause us without prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for these words that speak so boldly to what we believe as Christians. And we pray, O oh God, that the words that we share this morning will take root in our hearts and produce the fruit of faith in each one of us. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. I'm going to, this morning, for, for just a moment, jump into my Wayback Machine, okay? If you don't know what that is, it's me remembering something that happened quite a long time ago. I was in college, and I had met this guy in the library, because the library is a place where you didn't study or read, you just talked. And uh, uh, we, we began to do that, and over a period of time, he, he wanted to ask me, what, what's the real important part about Christianity? Um, because he was seeking and, and, and trying to, to find out some things. And he said, don't talk to me about uh, religion or, or even theology. I want to know, what's the real part about Christianity? And I began to kind of think in my head all kinds of things that I want to say to him. Uh, I thought about things like, uh, well, it, it could be about 
the 23rd Psalm may be, and the Lord is my shepherd, and those things that have brought comfort to so many people. Or, or maybe it's about particular ideas like uh, grace, or some other things. And, and as I continue to try to think of what those things might be, well, this guy, his name was Kirk. Uh, he uh, he uh, actually just kind of, I had learned, left school because I never saw him again. And I always wondered what happened to Kurt. And, 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 and I kind of wish when he had asked that question, that, that question that was, what's the part that really matters? That I would have answered him in a more direct way. Um, I wish I had seen it sooner so that I, I knew that was really what he was looking for. Time goes on. Uh, this, past, this past week I was uh, back at, uh, in Richmond. I had a doctor's appointment to go back and see uh, I had just recently had surgery, and uh, he was telling me everything was okay, and that was all good. When I was coming back home, though, I happened to stop, and, and I stopped at uh, the, the churches that I first began my ministry at, and uh, I was just kind of thinking about each of those churches and some things, I don't know, maybe reflecting a little bit as well, and and when I stopped at those churches, I, I remembered some different individuals. At one church, I remembered a man named Bob. And Bob, Bob uh, owned uh, a uh, dairy farm and uh, was wonderfully and, and well, him and his whole family, respected within the community. But I remember Bob had a transforming experience at the church that I was at. And not only did it transform Bob, it transformed everybody around it. Bob began to share and talk about faith and how important it was to him. And before very long, that church, that one year after, he had that kind of an understanding of what real faith was. Once he understood the part that really mattered, we had over 20 people join that church on profession of faith because Bob was sharing with everybody, his family, his friends, his work associates, everybody. It made a huge impact. I stopped at another church, and, and uh, that church, I, I remember John. And John, John had just recently gotten married back then. And him and I were, were having conversations about, about what it meant to be men of God. And we were talking about some of the difficulties that we had both at work and at home and in other places. I remember once I, I met with John at, at, at the local uh, grocery store there, and, and I had uh, gone in to, to just pick up some ice cream. And, and John saw me, and we started talking. The ice cream I had put on the back floor board. And we talked for over two hours, and when I got in the car, though, it was a midsummer, too. It was... It was not in the box. <laughs> uh, but John went on to, to, do, uh, to be an amazing uh, husband and, and, a, and a leader in that community when he discovered the importance of that part that really mattered about how God was calling him and who God was calling him to be. And then the, the third church uh, was was a church, uh, and, and the gentleman's name that I remember was Stewart. And, and Stewart had been a logger, uh, kind of like a lumberjack, and he had also driven the, tra the uh, trucks. If you've ever been to West Point, you see those trucks driving in with all kinds of uh, 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 <coughs> trees on the back. He did that for quite a while. Um, and and Stewart, Stewart said, you know, I've grown up in the church all my life, and it's never seemed real. And now, now he said, it seems real to me. And, and he began to, to share that with other people. And in that church too, people began to respond to those kinds of things. 
and, and people in that church as well. And, and I watched these three churches with these three particular men. And it began to prosper and grow, these three churches. And as I began to reflect on that, I, I began to think, wow, different occasions, different experiences. But they made the difference because they heard and understood and claimed for themselves the gospel of Christ. And it is that gospel, that good news, that makes the difference in our lives. So here's what Paul said. I want you to understand the things of first importance above all the other things that you might hear or talk about or think about here are the things that are of first importance wow Paul puts it right there and his words are these that Jesus Christ died was buried and was raised from the dead those, say the Apostle Paul, are the things of most importance. That Jesus died. That Jesus died. Why did he die? Because upon, as Paul would say in 2 Corinthians, upon a sinless Christ was laid the sins of you who had died. And because he took upon those sins willingly, we are free to have a relationship with God. Sin no longer blocks our pathway to God. So, Jesus, in that moment upon the cross, when, when the sins of all the world came upon him, he was immediately separated from God. And his thoughts were, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was because all of the sins of the world, of yours and mine, were laid upon a sinless Christ who willingly took them that we might have a relationship with God. That is good news. That Christ died for our sins. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. When I think of these three men who really understood that, begin to think how important it is for each of us to share our story. You probably don't know this name. It kind of falls through the cracks of history. But there was a man by the name of Mordecai Ham. Way back in his way back machine to 1934 where he told that message of the gospel of good news, of Jesus dying upon the cross, was buried and rose again from the dead. He told that story to a young man whose name was Billy, who became the Graham. And that message was the message that Billy Graham echoed all through his life, that Christ died, was buried, and was resurrected. That, beloved, is the good news. That is the part that really, truly matters. For you see, not only did Christ die for our sins, he was buried. Paul, when he is writing to this church at Corinth. He's writing to a church that doesn't truly 
altogether understand resurrection because of all of the different customs and beliefs of both Greek and Roman culture. And he's trying to help them understand in, in a very important way the difference and what it means. And you and I important part of our faith lives. You stood at the grave of a loved one. I was thinking back and I remember standing in the middle of March uh, on a rainy day when my father died. And again, another rainy March day when my sister passed away. And I think of other days, other people, my grandparents on both sides passing away. And in the midst of all of those, and then other people, perhaps, I, you know, people that are a part of, of your life. When my fiance died, ovarian cancer, and other good friends who was so dear who had committed suicide. And I think of all of those people, I think importantly about the good news. And what is that good news? The good news is this, that not only did Christ die upon the cross, not only was he buried, but that he rose from the dead. And one day, the trumpet will sound. One day, those who have died in Christ will raise up, and we will be together with them. That is our hope as God's people. And so this, this, says Paul, this is the heart of the gospel. I'm going to tell you, It wasn't a year later when I was still in those churches that Bob was diagnosed with cancer. And within that year, Bob died. But he died as a man of faith who had lived out that faith and made a mark difference in the lives of others. John continued on to be a great husband and, and a man active in both the church and his community. Beloved, and Stuart. Stuart had switched from driving the lumber trucks to driving gas tankers. And he was in Mechanicsville one day, and a car drove into his lane, and Stuart tried to avoid that. The truck jackknifed, and he died as a result of that fire that ensued from that collision. The point of the story is the good news of the gospel that no matter who we are, God holds us. You see, it's these two pillars of the cross, both the vertical and the horizontal. The horizontal that tells us what? That God's love is so wide. For God so loved you and me. And the vertical that points to the holiness of God and the intersection of God's love and God's holiness come right there at the cross. For it is there at the cross where your sins and my sins were laid upon the sinless Christ. And he took those upon himself that we, you and me, could have a relationship with God. That, that is the part that matters. That is the part that Paul calls the good news. Let's pray. 
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your good news that speaks to us, O oh God. And it is our prayer now, God, that you would cause our hearts to stir and to claim again the good news in our hearts that you love us with an everlasting love and that you sent your son to die upon the cross that we might be freed from the burden of sin and that we might be able to live new lives because of your love. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.
want to thank our choir for beautiful number. Especially want to thank Lynn for uh, coordinating and making sure that we have all of the right music in the right places and uh, all the hard work that she does. Uh, please be sure to affirm her and the choir for uh, all of their wonderful work. And I must say, I've had the chance now to really visit most all of our church committees. And I am so excited by their involvement and the kind of the renewed sense of uh, kind of activity and, and preparation for things that are getting ready to happen in our midst. So I continue to be amazed at your spirit, continue to be amazed at your dedication uh, and your willingness and desire to help our church be the kind of church that God wants us to be. So I'm very excited and very blessed and, and, and know that that will continue as we uh, go through our time. I want to take the uh, opportunity to share joys and concerns and was wondering, do we have any joys this morning that we want to share or lift up? Anybody? Any, anything good that you'd like to share and lift up? as uh, the family of God. Anybody? Yes? I am just impressed by how well the church came together to clean up the place, get it all stripped up, to help out with the lunches, and, and the people came. Yeah, they did. They did. And we, uh, we showed extraordinary hospitality, which is a, a key thing, uh, I believe, in attracting new people uh, to our church, and so I, it, it touched my heart to see that we did that so well. So thank you again, and we'll continue to extend that sense of hospitality to others, and that willing spirit as well. Uh, anyone else? Yes? Um, I would like to share a joy. Um, people here know about Lou Morgan, that she has been for the past year in an assisted living uh, facility in Reston, and she has been without regular visitation for quite a while. And Trinity Presbyterian Church in Herndon yes. has agreed to adopt her into their pastoral care program and not only visit her, but provide <coughs> spiritual support for her as she uh, is there at uh, all Oaks. So i just very joyful for their response. Absolutely, a small world. I uh, I know that church actually oh, pretty yeah. well. I uh, I was at Herndon United Methodist Church okay. in the same community, so we had uh, a number of uh, interactions with them. So fantastic, that's wonderful. Another blessing. I don't know if you've read it or seen it, or uh, but they did all of the hard work on our uh, Linton uh, devotionals uh, and. What a wonderful thing that is. Let's give her a hand. And also, everyone else who participated in writing and sharing uh, their devotions and their thoughts, also uniquely wonderful. So uh, we thank you for the richness of our faith here at the church. Uh, concerns, things that we want to lift up to God this morning, people that we want to uh, be in prayer for. Anyone? Yes? Joey Hanley. Joe. He was in here. He's retired to Florida, but he suffered a heart attack and got the surgery this week. Okay. Joe. The family of Glenda Lerba. Glenda Lerba. Okay. Okay. Any, anyone else? Let's, let's pause this. We bow together in prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we come this day. Thankful, O oh God, for the blessings that are ours as the people of God. Thankful, O oh God, that you have visited us here in this place. Thankful, O oh Heavenly Father, that your love is real in our hearts and lives. Father, we, we know that you are a God who is concerned, who holds each one of us in the very palm of your hand. So we pray for Job. And all others who have needs that need to be met in their lives. We pray and we thank you, O oh God, that you hear our prayers. And we know this that you 
care for us so we can cast our cares on you. As we do, we know and experience your caring love in our lives. And so, oh God, we ask that you bless this church and this community, that, that we would know beyond the shadow of a doubt your great love for each of us. And we pray, God, now, during this Lenten season, a time of reflection and a time of consideration that as Easter approaches, we can celebrate with great joy the resurrection of us, O oh God, to understand the depth of meaning that comes when we celebrate a risen Christ. And so God, now, we join together and we pray this prayer that you taught your disciples of old. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. For the height and depth, for the length and width 
of your love toward us. And it is our prayer, O oh God, that our roots, our roots will grow down deep into the soil of your marvelous love. Amen.